It's good to start every day with goodwill. It's a wish for happiness. And try to extend it to everybody. Goodwill is something that's very easy for human beings to feel for some people, the people you like, the people who've been good to you. It's very easy to feel ill will for people who've been harsh to you, cruel, unfair. But as the Buddha pointed out, if you have ill will for anybody, it's very likely that you're going to behave in an unskillful way toward those people. And that's going to become your karma, which you don't want. So instead you try to develop the karma of goodwill. How do you create thoughts of goodwill in the mind? Well, first you think about what it means to wish other beings happiness. Basically it means that you're wishing that they will behave in a skillful way, because after all, their happiness is going to have to depend on their actions. Your happiness depends on your actions. We can help one another, but the actual choices are made by each individual, and those are the important things. So you wish that everybody would have goodwill for everybody else. We all behave in a skillful way. And then reinforce that wish by realizing, realizing how you create mind states to begin with. The Buddha points out two things that you can do. One is the way you talk to yourself in full sentences, and the other is the images you hold in mind. So the Buddha recommends sentences to think, may these beings be free from suffering, free from trouble, free from oppression, free from animosity. May they look after themselves with ease. May these beings not have any ill will for anyone anywhere. May they not despise anyone anywhere. So wishing both that they be happy, and also that they understand the causes for true happiness. That's what that thought is all about. And you try to keep that consciously in mind, even as you're dealing with really difficult people. Tell yourself, may these beings be happy. May they not create the causes for, for suffering. And it helps to hold some images in mind as well. Because that's the other thing, that the way in which the mind creates its own mind states. The perceptions, the analogies. The Buddha tells you to protect your goodwill as a mother would protect her only child with her life. He gives the image of some bandits pinning you down and sawing off your limbs with a two-handled saw. I've always liked that detail. He says, even then you have to have goodwill for them. Because, if, of course, if you have ill will, it's going to infect your mind state, and if you happen to die at that point, you're going to be dying with ill will, and that's not a good way to die. It says to make your goodwill as large as the earth. A man can come along and dig here and dig there, spit here, spit there, urinate here, urinate there, saying, be without earth, be without earth. But he hasn't much, any, much of any influence, because his efforts are so puny compared to the size of the earth. You want your goodwill to be that large. I think of your goodwill as being like space. People can try to write words in space, but there's no place for the words to stick. People can do bad things to you, but don't let it stick in your heart. When you can talk to yourself in these ways and hold these images in mind, it makes it a lot easier to develop thoughts of goodwill for difficult people and to maintain them. And that's for your good and for theirs. So think thoughts of goodwill every day, every day. John Munn used to think, devote three times a day to extending thoughts of goodwill to all beings, early in the morning, right after his nap in the afternoon, and then right before going to bed at night. And it's a good way to create a framework for your practice. Because after all, we're looking for the end of suffering, we're looking for happiness at last. And if it's built on any harm to anybody, it's not going to last. So for the sake of your happiness, make good thoughts of goodwill for everybody every day.